In this video, I'll cover a few really important things I wish I knew when I started playing Beyond All Reason. These tips are game changing, let's get started with some basics. Find your commander anytime by pressing Ctrl plus C. You can see all your idle buildings and workers here, and can cycle through them with Ctrl plus B. And if you hear a ping or alert, press F3 to see it. Now your commander comes with the D gun. For 500 energy, you can one hit kill anything in its path, but it has a short range. So obviously you can't just walk up to an experimental unit and try this. Instead, you'll need to learn about your cloak. Cloak units that stand still cost only a little bit of energy per second. It costs more if you move. Note that cloak units will still appear on the radar and can be revealed by countermeasures or if an enemy gets too close to you. Your commander has the highest highest build power in the game. Use it to assist with critical projects. And notice how your commander has a line of sight and this farther green dotted range? That's your radar range. It can allow you to attack units and buildings beyond your line of sight. However, attacking into the fog of war is pretty inaccurate. Later on, at tier 2, you can build structures which increase the accuracy of long range fire, but the buff gets smaller with each building, so it's advised to build no more than 3 for an entire allied team. Also, radar can't see past physical barriers, so try to place them up high and near the edge of terrain to get the best view possible. And don't forget that you can dumb fire into the fog of war if you know enemies or structures are there. Be sure to check Bar's really helpful online guides and Discord to learn even more tips and tricks that I didn't cover here. On to building and combat tips worth knowing right away. If you plan on using wind energy, hover your mouse over the wind icon to note the average wind power on your map and to learn if wind power is even viable. So you know how to hold chip to queue up any action, right? Let's say you want to insert an action in front of a queue without cancelling and starting over. Just hold the spacebar when you add the new action to insert it to the front of the queue. You can also use shift to build multiple things in a line. Hold shift plus alt to build in a rectangle, and multiple constructors can split the queue amongst them. But beware, buildings explode when destroyed, and this can cause a chain reaction. Devastating. Devastating. To prevent this, space your buildings out. Once a building or unit is placed, click on them and hold space plus X to see two red rings that show the explosion radius for death and a glowing one for self detonation, which is useful for surprising enemy swarms and preventing them from reclaiming your metal. Finally, if you build basic solar collectors or tier 1 energy to metal converters, you can reclaim these less efficient buildings once you get started on tier 2 to reclaim a good amount of metal that you might be needing. Phew, that's enough about building shortcuts, now let's look at some army commands. Control plus click will get your group to move in formation. That means means they'll move at the speed of the slowest unit in the group. If you hold click and move your mouse in a line, your selected army will set themselves up evenly across the line you drew. Excellent for perching an army next to a cliff or around units. Don't forget that flanking an enemy or building, meaning you attack them from more than one side, will increase the total amount of damage your units can output. And note that at max range, lasers only do 50% damage, but this increases up to 100% when you're right up against them. Some actions like repairing, attacking, and reclaiming can be set to an area by clicking and dragging on the object. This creates a round zone of action for your units. Okay, now let's say that you're producing units like crazy and lost track of where some of them went. No problem, just select the units you're looking for and press Ctrl Z to select all of them on the entire map. You can also double click to do the same thing, but this will only capture the ones within your view screen. Here are some final tips you may not know. Units with higher ranks have reduced reload times and higher health. Bots have a greater ability to traverse rough and hilly terrain than vehicles do. However, amphibious vehicles can move along uneven terrain as well, and hovering vehicles cannot be attacked by underwater torpedoes from submarines. The corners of a unit's icon shows whether it can attack air, land, or underwater. There's some really critical info here. And when you're setting up a game, you can change locations, number, and the size of spawn zones. There's also a ton of ways to customize your game gameplay experience. For example, under accessibility, you can specify that teams can share one color or everyone can have their own. Finally, hold alt and slide your mouse to the edge of the screen or use the middle mouse button to change your perspective. Don't forget to sub and share my channel with others. I make all sorts of funny reviews and easy to follow guides.